So Peen, it's great to speak to you and it's great to be doing this interview in this position where you've been doing, performing your commentary duties throughout the past few seasons. But what I wanted to know is as someone who's experienced the success of the women's team over the past three years since 2018 when they rejoined the WSL, what do you think of their success and how it's been built upon? It's been a really interesting one with um, United because obviously you've got the other clubs such as Arsenal, Chelsea and, and Manchester City which were sort of already miles ahead um, what United were when they came in three years ago. Now of course they had to start in the Championship United and they, they won it for the first year of asking which just shows sort of the, the level that they had put the team together and, and they were able to get players that had dropped down a league to play at United because they saw the vision. So. I think that was really important and especially with a manager like Casey Stoney who um, you know, was the first manager of this new Manchester United side and um, she had a clear vision of what she wanted to do, she was able to get a really good squad together as I said, you know, getting players that were playing in uh, you know, the WSL or playing elsewhere, you know, a couple of players from America and, and, and places like that so she was able to really build a squad and I think without her and without that vision I don't think United would have done as well as they did and obviously they came into the to the WSL did really fantastically well in their first season um, they were winning matches that people play you know people weren't thinking they were going to win it was obviously going to be difficult to try and get in and around um, the teams like Arsenal City and Chelsea which was a struggle in their first season but you saw in the last season that we've just had um, they were only a couple of points away from, from the top three and they were so close to it as well. They had a fantastic start, 10 games unbeaten. Um, so yeah, they, I think they've, they've really rapidly grown um, in a very, very short amount of time. Absolutely, and you pinpointed that Casey Stoney was a massive part in that success, but now she's obviously gone and seven players have also left a few months after she did. How do you think the team are gonna pull around now and carry on? It's just a part of football, isn't it? That managers go, players go, you sort of have to adjust and, and it is a game that players will just have to adjust with new players that come into the squad and it's going to be a whole new competition for places as well because there's, there's new you know new players coming in that will might you know take a preferred position um, so it's going to be interesting I, I think it will take a time for this side to gel together again as from what Casey did because Casey obviously had her own style of football and her own style of play and it was also important, I think, what Casey had brought into this side was that she had started this club with some of the players that are still at the club now. So they had that development, they had that growth. Um, now, obviously, they've got the new manager in Mark Skinner, who also has WSL experience, but also has experience in America. Um, and he'll know a lot of the players anyway. And uh, they had a pretty good pre-season too. So I think it'll be one of those things where the players just have to get on with it. They will you know, do their best under the new manager. Um, but it'll be an interesting one to see for sure, especially because other teams around them as well are recruiting really well. Everton as well, one of the teams that look like they're going to be doing really well this season. They've got some great players in there and of course we've just heard as well Tobin Heath has now joined Arsenal um, after spending the season at Manchester United. So that's another sort of player that they're going to have to come up against United and it'll be a tough season but of course their aim is still to get into that Champions League spots and hopefully they can do it this year. We're looking towards the future. Matt Skinner did say in his pre-season that he doesn't need to rebuild the team. He said he just needs to carry on from where Casey Stoney left off. And five new signings, so it looks promising for the season ahead. Yeah, some really good signings as well. Some players with a lot of experience. Um, you've got Aoife Mannion, who obviously comes from Manchester City. Um, she had quite she had a, quite an injury um, prone season really. So it's quite nice to be able to see her actually coming back and, and playing in the fray as well. Um, and then you've got the likes of, of Martha Thomas as well, who is a prolific striker, played at West Ham, really fantastic player. Um, Hannah Blundell, you know, was uh, was a stalwart in, in Chelsea's defence and she, she'll definitely be a good one to put into the side. And you've got a couple of other players as well that just seem to fit into United's um, way of, of playing and, and seemingly what Mark Skinner wants, the way he wants to play as well. And they've got a pretty big squad now, 21 player squad. So um, there's definitely competition for places. It'll be interesting to see what kind of formations he goes with because they've sort of played around with, with who they're, where they're putting everyone and, and, and things like that. So it'll be interesting to see, but it's definitely a good problem for Mark Skinner to have. 
And finally, looking at more positive points in the season to come, but from a commentator's perspective, how good will it be to have the fans back this season, especially the Barmy Army, of course? Yeah, it'll be fantastic. I mean, I think that's one of the things that they've really missed. It's been over 580 days or something since um, United fans were, were back at Lee Sports Village and it's going to be an absolutely rocking stadium, I'm sure, because even when they were having a pre-season over in Rangers in Scotland, they even travelled all the way over there. So they're a really loyal fan base. Um, but you'll, you'll see the likes of Leicester, for example, they're going to be playing at the King Power Stadium. A huge stadium, uh, you know, obviously they host the men's games and they're also going to be hosting the women's games, which is a huge step forward in women's football. And of course, getting fans in there, you'll be able to sort of try and... and, and get more fans to go to these kind of games that's not just specifically women's football fans, that they can just be football fans. And hopefully that is what will grow with the women's game as well, that more more people will start coming to the, to the games. But you also need to be able to have clubs that are willing to sort of put that out there and, and, and you know, advertise that these games are on, that tickets are available. Tickets are relatively cheap still for women's football. So it's a really exciting time, and especially when there's weekends like this when um, whilst we're talking now it's the international break for the men's football so it's a perfect opportunity for people that are missing their football this weekend to go and watch women's football.